to you wherever you're watching from i hope you had a beautiful week and like we were saying last week i hope you didn't allow anybody put you down this week i hope you're able to live your life from within i hope the things people say to you in school whatever unpleasant name they might be calling you because of an unpleasant situation you can do anything about i hope you didn't let it get to you and i hope you know you are beginning to see that you are more than whatever anybody can see and imagine. Whatever you choose to have, that's what you experience. I want to share with you some scriptures today that will also help you see that even in the world of God, there is a structure to help us know that our self-esteem should not be dampened by anybody. In Psalms 139 verse 14, I'm reading the NIV, NIV version just in case you want to check it out all through this recording. The Bible says, I will praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You, Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. I will praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Now, this doesn't just describe your physical appearance. It also describes your mind. It describes, you know, your spirit being. How God sat down to see he wanted to replicate himself. Yes, your physical appearance, however they may be, is a demonstration of your genes. But when God made you, even with those genes, he was careful to say, I wanted this person to be like this, so that they could fit a certain thing for the society. It might not be nice, but trust me, it will be used for something great. Another scripture you see is in Ephesians 2 verse 10. The Bible says, For we are God's handiwork. We are God's and the world. So that includes you and I. Created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us. So you see what I was saying earlier on, that whatever it is you are, God made it for a specific purpose. So you are God's and the world. Created specifically for a future He has prepared ahead of time for you. So the Bible is even pointing to say, no one can deal and dampen your self-esteem because God made you. And he made you for a purpose and every part of you you know it's 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 designed to suit and fit something and another scripture i'm going to read for you is in romans 8 37 to 39. scripture says no in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who love us for i am convinced that neither death nor life neither angels nor demons neither the present nor the future nor any power neither i or the neither height or depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love that god has in us in christ jesus for us you see god is all over you god is all over you god is all over you to make all of this work god is just wanting to say see i have plans for you you have my backing Forget what anybody has said to you, even if it's your family member that said it, even if it's your siblings that are making jests of you, even if it's you felt it was your best friend, you know, even if it was an authority figure, as long as you don't want that thing to be said of you, forget about it. This is what God is saying about you. His handiwork, fearfully and wonderfully made. You have a future. Nothing can separate you from His love. You are born in His love, you are fashioned in His love. And you were made for his love 
So everything about you is just within God's love. I'll read one more scripture for you. Isaiah 41 verse 10. The Shakespeare says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So you see, let me ask you a question. Have you noticed that whatever anybody has said to you, if you just cast your mind back a bit, they said it and they left. You might probably see them maybe because you're in school together or maybe because you're in the house together. But guess who will never leave you? God. He's the one always with you. So, let's do a mental thought about this process. If God is always with you, and the person in your secondary school or in your family that you don't see all the time is saying something negative to you, who should you really believe? Or you don't really believe that God is with you? Oh, well, God is with you. Fear not. He is with you. So even in an unpleasant feeling of hurt or despair, you know, God is with you. So if you look at the Bible, it's Gideon. What came to Gideon and told Gideon, I want you to do this thing for me. And Gideon did what most of us would do when people have said, we have inferiority complex in one area or the other. So he says, I'm the smallest in my family. And my family is the smallest in Israel, in the tribe. And the tribe where my family belongs to is the smallest in Israel. So he's the smallest of the smallest of the smallest. So can you imagine how Gideon would have felt when, just like you'll be feeling, they've told me that I'm no good. They've told me that, oh, this, 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 this defect that they say I have, this will not make me do this. They say I have shorts. They say I have a big hair. They say my teeth is out. They say my skin color is irritating. They say I'm fat. They say I'm too slim. They say I'm too tall. You know, imagine whenever they said, they say I'm slow to speech. They said, even Moses said that of himself. Moses was going to deliver Israel. He was, he was slow in speech. It means that he was a stutterer. He, 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 he was doing this. He, 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 and God said, you're the one I want to deliver my people and the one that will go to Pharaoh. And Moses told God that I am still in speech. And God said, don't worry. I will use everything regardless. And the same he did with Gideon. Don't worry. Your, your father might not be the president of the nation. Don't worry. Your father might not be governor. Don't worry. Your father might not even be popular in your town. But I am with you and we can do things. So you see, you can do things. Because God is with you. God made you for a purpose. Forget about what they've said to you in the past. He's with you and can do things. You There's also... David, he was going to fight Goliath. Goliath was a giant. In our today's world, just imagine that Goliath is like, uh, what's the name of this guy in the Avengers movie? Now I can't remember his name. It's the guy who was sticking the ring. Just remember with that that big, and you're going to fight him. He was intimidated. Of course, he was scary. Of course, he was not sure. Of course, he was feeling that he could. But David remember who is with him. The same God who helped him to overcome the lion and the bear the same God who helped him to overcome this. So that's the same thing that can happen to you. There are a few things I'll just share with you that you should try and remember as you are going to deal with your self-esteem. Never focus on your body. Don't let your body the, the focus of the things you can do or not do. You, you see, none of us, I'm telling you, every single human being in this world has a physical future defect. Every one of us. There's something in our physical future that is not in quotes or an unquote perfect so don't let that bother you don't focus on that you know the main thing will be do you trust god you have character you have character then remember another thing to remember is that you are not in competition with anybody so don't compare yourself with another person like i told you last week focus on your strength and grow your weakness don't compete with anybody you know don't compete with anybody then anybody who is making jest of you for anything you do Cut off from those people. Cut off from those people. If you can't cut off from them, maybe they are family members. Spend more time with people who make you improve your mental state. You know, spend more time with those sort of people. You know, you see, at the end of the day, you would have to be the one who be comfortable in your skin. You would have to be the one who enjoys what you do for yourself. You know, everything about everything we do here is always connected to the fact that God loves you. And you have to be sure of that fact, then you express it. Don't forget that our memory verse is still Psalm 22, verse 5. So I'll read that one last time before we close. Psalm 22, verse, Psalm 25, verse 5. I'm sorry. Psalm 25, verse 5. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. 
Oh, on you I will wait all day. God loves you. God is holding up to you. Remember, there are numbers showing on our screen. If you're having a very peculiar experience, because one of the things that help us with dealing with these things is talking with people, you know, getting somebody to hold our hands and go through it. So there are numbers on the screen. You know, reach out to any of those numbers. We would love to hear from you. And we would love to help you through your journey of growth and transformation. The world is waiting for you. I'm telling you, your world is waiting for you to be all you can. So don't let anybody put you down with words or with action and deep. You are more than what they think you are. So go for it and conquer the world. We love you. We're cheering for you. Have a great week. Bye-bye.